Hello, hello, it's Tina. I'm an American real estate agent that moved to France with her rescue dog, Webster. He's sleeping down here. You cannot see him, and I don't wanna mess up my whole camera setup here. I got good lighting come in. Ooh, look at it. Okay, the sun's coming out. Here we go. So if you're new here, please subscribe. I'd love for you to like, comment below. I always love to hear your thoughts. But hold on one second, let me close my door. I'm back. So today we're gonna to talk about why I came back from France. A lot of people have been asking me and I actually did a video um, when I came back and I deleted it because I guess I wasn't really ready to uncover the reasons why and personally I didn't really know um, fully. So I'm very spiritual and I know that everything happens for a reason and I know that God is guiding me. I don't know if you guys call it God, you can call it anything you want to, um, but for me it's the same thing, different name. I have a higher being calling me in my life that directs me and basically controls the steps of my life. Um, of course we all have free will, but that's another video. So getting back on track, the reason why I came back from France um, is, is a little tricky. So when I was considering whether to come back here to the US um, from France, a lot of things took place. Um, I was actually thinking about teaching in China and I had a couple interviews lined up for that. The interview that I had like went horribly. I asked about um, some of the healthcare options or something or and how the living expenses would be um, living over in China and the interviewer, a guy, he didn't know the answer to my question and he got offended. And I've never heard, I've never had that happen. I thought it was so weird that I was asking basically a financial question about honestly, if I were to move, you know, would this be covered? I thought it was a basic question and it totally shocked him. He didn't know the answer and he was like acting really funny. And he's like, uh, sorry, we've decided not to extend the job to you. <laughs> so the China thing was off. And um, at that point, my parents were like, no, it doesn't sound like you need to go to China. COVID was just uh, announced. It was coming to China like within days, maybe before or after that. And I was like, no, China's definitely out. Um, we're not doing that. And then I tried to get an apart, uh, appointment to um, change my visa and renew it, I guess. Not change it, but renew my visa. And for whatever reason, the phone wasn't working correctly. I couldn't get contact to make the appointment. I don't know, like it feels like no one was around to like help or assist. It was just like a bunch of things, just technical difficulties. Um, I couldn't get into the phone line to make my appointment. So my dog is playing. Every time I like to do a video or like there's music playing, my dog wants to play with toys and stuff. So he's making noise in the background. I'm trying to quietly signal him to be shh, shh, shh. But I like when he plays. So um, back to my story. Uh, where was I? The visa, I just couldn't get an appointment. I couldn't even get an appointment to go to the prefecture in, in Paris and um, it was just really just convoluted. Just all these things were happening and it was just crazy. I just couldn't, nothing was coming together. I even went to like this expat group. Um, it's a very popular expat, expat Paris group on Facebook and they were so mean to me. They were like, well, with your visa, you cannot renew it. I'm like, yes, I can renew a visa a tourist visa, visa, yes, you can renew that. You can renew that as many times as you want. Um, so I had a tourist visa, visa for the year and I can renew it um, as long as you have like an income. And I really didn't have the income. At that time, I just started working for a real estate company there. Um, and in France, real estate takes about six months, three to maybe six months at the very least 
to um, close a transaction. Now here in the States, it could, I've closed a deal in two weeks, like a cash deal in two weeks, um, but normally it's about 30 to 45 days to close a real estate deal. So I was so surprised and I was like running low on my money and um, nothing was really coming in. I got a couple checks from my modeling agency. Um, I'm, a mo I'm a model um, now with a different agency, but at that time I had some checks coming in from doing fit modeling with my agency back in Charlotte. So um, that saved me like a lot, but I had to have a heart to heart with my parents and this is embarrassing to, to know, like I'm way above 30 and um, and at this time I wasn't quite 40, uh, what was this, a year and a half ago when I came back and um, I'm like begging my parents to help me come back and they're like, we'll help you but we're not gonna give you the money till you like get on the plane. You need to get home, you need to stop calivating around, is that a word, I don't know. Calivating, I don't know, I can't say the word. Um, caravating, car skating. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'm getting so nervous, but I'm gonna continue talking. Um, um, parading, parading around the, the uh, there's people walking and looking into my apartment and I just hate that, it's so nosy, don't do that. Anyway, so you don't need to parade around the country, like you need to get back, you need to get settled. And they're like, my dad's like, well, Texas has a lot of jobs. You should probably check out, check out Texas. Um, but the way that my credit was set up at that time, it was really hard to get an apartment and to get an apartment without a job is like a whole other thing. Um, so there wasn't like a lot of options and I had literally like a week or less to figure out where I was gonna move. So I applied to a couple different apartments and I got denied um, by an apartment in Texas. And it was like, you know, the lowest budget possible like that you would ever wanna live in. But it was like a starting place. My dad was like, you don't need to do nothing fancy. Like, um, just get the lowest you can where you can live in a place and find a job, you know? So the only apartment that would accept me was in Denver. So I moved to Denver. And it was a nice apartment. I just prayed like, please don't have any roaches. <laughs> I lived in Miami for three and a half years and literally it scared, roaches scare me to this day. I don't even want to say the name of it. I don't want to like, like attract the name or say, I don't want, I don't want to do that. So long story short, I did get an apartment in Denver. It was a nice, it's a nice apartment. I still live here. Um, the leasing manager was just so nice and accommodating, helping me get in. Like I negotiated um, having uh, one month free. So that allowed me to move in and have like, you know, cover the moving cost of moving in, but not have to pay the rent right up front. So that would allow me to get a job and do all this stuff um, to move in and, you know, get furniture and stuff like that. And I actually did not get furniture when I first moved in, but we'll talk about that later. <sighs> So I, I got on the plane, I actually negotiated my way to change my ticket from Texas, where I thought I was moving, to Denver. And I asked them not to change the price because I was just going on a shoestring budget and I really needed to just get home. So I had to fight for like a day for that. Um, and I appreciate the airline, they got me back. They actually even let my dog go with me in in the plane so i didn't have to pay extra for that i was just so gracious for everything um but i cannot say it wasn't stressful <sighs> so um i get on the plane i get on the train i get um before i get on the plane i had to take a three hour train ride to paris and then i got on the plane in paris and then i took an eight hour flight to to uh atlanta and then I took another two hour flight with my dog um, to Denver and I get to Denver um, late at night on actually January 31st. So I stayed almost a year in France. I got there like February 19th of 2019 and I came back January 31st. 2020 and that was like right like a month before COVID I would say 
like February 1st, I woke up and it, I was in Denver and like maybe like March, what it was it, 20th, the US had shut down. So I was here like a month before then and um, I went ahead and what did I do first? I, I got a temp job and I worked a very nice job, um, you know, but it was only temporary, it was only for like a few weeks and um, then the office shut down and I really couldn't work from home. We tried it, but it wasn't working. So they hired me back uh, months, months later, like in, I would say June. So, so I was working for like maybe one month or, or not even two, March, April. Um, my neighbors decide to play music. So if you can hear some music, it's my neighbors. Let's see if they hear me. Should I just... Shut up! They're not gonna stop playing music. Anyways, we'll just try to yell over it. I cannot believe this. Um, my neighbors are a mess. Stop! Oh! <laughs> my dog is right here. He's like, what are you doing? This, <laughs> this video is a mess. <laughs> I'm gonna keep on going, keep on going. Um, this channel is called Real Talk Tina, so we're gonna be real right now. Uh, what happened? So yeah, so like they laid me off. Oops. Um, they laid me off and uh, they hired me back like in June. So March, April, May, June. Like I was, I was not working for like four months. Um, my parents gave me a little bit of money. To, to, to get on the plane and to get my first couple months, um, my rent and stuff, and maybe get like a little furniture. But honestly, I didn't have enough money for furniture. So um, every month, this is a tip for people who are moving and don't have a lot of money. Um, every month when people move out, they leave like perfectly good furniture down in the dumpster, especially if you live in a really nice building. Like you might even wanna to go to like the really, really, really like high-end five-star apartments in your town and go to the dumpster like near the end of the month or the first of the month when people move out. And there's gonna be like brand new furniture there that you can use. So I got, I don't know if you can see this, nice like leather chair. Um, and a nice table for my desk. What did I get, like a bookshelf? <laughs> I got a coffee table. The things I won't get in um, like a dumpster, I will not get like a mattress. I just, I just can't get over it, I know. I won't get a mattress even if it looks good. Like I will not take someone else's mattress and I will not take like a couch. I, I just can't do it. Um, if it's a leather couch and someone's like selling it or something, that's fine. But if it's like all like, like uh, spongy or something and you need to sit on it and you don't know who's been sitting on it and what they've been doing on it, I can't do it. So um, I didn't have any furniture when I moved in, but quickly after that, um, I was able to get furniture from my little dumpster diving experience. Um, on the first day I moved here, I did stay in a, in a hotel because it was late at night when I came in. But, um, I'm sorry about the music if you can hear it. But uh, the first day I moved in, I just moved in like with like three suitcases and the maintenance man, bless his heart, was like, um, do you have somewhere to sleep? Do you have furniture? I was like, no. And he gave me his air mattress to sleep on. So quiet is kept. I've been sleeping on an air mattress since then. And before you knock it, okay, I'm gonna do a video about what air mattress is the best because I've had a few since then because they're not really meant to, to sleep on long term. <laughs> but um, I've had a mattress that literally made my eye twitch like for a year. I didn't know what was going on with my eye. The eye doctor was like, well, you're a little stressed out. You need to maybe maybe pick another job. Maybe, you know, um, real estate is stressful. Maybe do something else. <laughs> and sure enough, I was like, okay, he's telling me that I'm crazy and I'm not officially. Um, I'm not crazy at all, actually. Uh, eccentric, yes. Quirky, yes. Crazy, 
no um but uh as soon as i switched my mattress when i moved to france and i got a new mattress my eye stopped twitching so it's all about your mattress and that can really mess up your back which goes right up right up to your eye right there so so me um sleeping on uh air mattress has, has been actually very comfortable for me and my back like and i looked on certain mattresses and there's these stories coming out that a lot of mattresses have fiberglass in them which is horrible for humans and children especially um and allergies and things like that and just your health so the the mattress that i want would be like a casper mattress or something like really nice for my back um i don't necessarily have like chronic back problems but um we'll get to the the health issues that i was dealing with later um so the air mattress actually ended up being like the most economical and comfortable thing and if you ever have to sleep on an air mattress for a long extended time i can recommend the best one that won't bust or break on you because <laughs> They're not always meant to stay long term. But anyways, that's another video. So if you want to hear that, you know, don't be ashamed. You could you could email me. Um, I'll leave my email down, or you could you could hit me up on Instagram, Real Talk Tina. Make sure you follow me there so you know. Um, I get my DMs there, or you can leave a comment right here. Um, but basically, so you know, I was living like very humbly. Like I just moved into my apartment. It was pretty much empty. Um, didn't have a lot of furniture, you know, had a job, but because of COVID, everything freaking shut down. Um, I had wanted to get my license here in real estate, but unfortunately the testing center shut down when I was just scheduled to take my test. So I had to wait several, several months to take my test in Denver and um, shout out to the um, one of my friends on here who asked me to do a video about how I got my license in Denver um, that will make three license I have um, North Carolina South Carolina and also um, Colorado so I can tell you how to pass your tests with ease um, I definitely would like to share those tips that's gonna be a great video but getting back to my move to Denver and why I moved here so um, I had been here and I started like working back in June, so I was working for like uh, another few weeks there at that job that had shut down due to COVID. And they literally handled COVID the best way possible. They did a rotation of the staff. So I worked in the HR department and like the staff came in in, in cycles. So not maybe maybe one other person was there at the same time and not everyone was there at the same time. They would have cleaning come in every two hours to clean down everything. You had to wear your mask at your desk, whether no one was there or not. At all times, unless you were eating, you had to have your mask on. Every morning when you came in, there was a nurse staff to take your temperature there, and they asked you questions like, do you feel like any symptoms of being sick or tired or have a fever? So every morning this came in, they provided water, but we couldn't use the kitchen in, in this job that I had. Uh, they handle it so professionally. Like, um, they even brought in lunch sometimes like a food truck lunch and they paid for it because they knew that we couldn't use the kitchen. They provided water and mask. I just thought that was like an excellent way. And throughout the year, I would, on and off, I would be working at different companies and they all handle it a different way, but not any other company handled it so well as that company. And I won't say the company's name, but I really appreciate that job. Like they pay their employees so well. And it was just like, right away I could start working and get on my feet and then I got my real estate license I joined the agency Woo! and now it's like a year and a half later but in July of last year you know I kind of realized like my energy even in France was not like where where I would want it to be like I really couldn't travel the way that I wanted to or do the things I wanted to do or take the pictures that I wanted to do and go the places that I wanted to do in France because of my energy level and I noticed like I was gaining weight and just like 
you can see here my skin is just different colors and even on my past videos i i found myself excuse like making excuses and apologizing for for my skin being discolored um and then just my hair is just so gray and i was just like all these symptoms going on of mostly my energy and also i, I spoke about my back um i just had achy bones um, and this is coming from someone who literally worked out six days a week. Uh, sometimes I worked out three days a day, three times a day, six days a week. Um, but mostly I just worked out, like did weights um, three times a week and then I did cardio on the other times and I did maybe one more for fun. I, I would play basketball in high school. Um, I can't say that I would ever make it to college basketball, but I, but I love, sports and um, being active so to go from that to like really not being able to travel the way that I want to gaining weight and even be having a full schedule but still not being able to lose weight the skin and the body aches that I've had like I couldn't lift weights like I did before because I just the muscle tension was just so much so I just started doing these calisthenics, um, really helped my body feel better. Uh, classical stretch comes on PBS on uh, in the US, but of course when I was in France, I didn't have that. But I started doing this like a few years ago and um, classical stretch has really helped me like alleviate the pain that I had in my body and the aches that I had. And so anyways, I went to the doctors. I'm like, something's wrong. Like I'm gaining way too much weight. Like I can't get it off. What is going on? Um, I'm completely different. And the doctor was like, well, you know, do you think it's just kind of like, you've always kind of had this? I'm like, yeah, I mean, I've always been like, not the skinniest girl ever. I always had to really work really hard to maintain my weight and the body, but I've always been able to do it, you know? Um, and my weight would fluctuate. And in the last like nine years, it's been getting worse. And she's like, well, I'm gonna send you to an endocrinologist. And I'm like, I already went to an endocrinologist years ago. They tested my thyroid and um, they were like, uh, they were like, you don't have a thyroid problem. You just need to lose weight and stop eating so much. Um, and I'm like, thank you. Okay, so I didn't revisit it for like nine years or maybe like five more years after that. So this time I'm going back to them and they're like, okay, we're gonna send you to an endocrinologist. And I step into the endocrinologist's office and she's like, well, you can do um, gastric bypass and you can lose weight that way. And I'm like, well, how about we do the test on my hormones um, and see what's going on. So um, my hormones were just like way up. The testosterone was really high. Um, and I'm not a doctor, but other hormones were out of whack as well. And they sent me in for a CT scan and they found out that I have an adrenal tumor. Um, it, luckily, it looks to be benign, which is awesome. It's, it doesn't seem to be cancerous, but it's still causing havoc in my body. It's still causing like um, bouts of depression, you know, irritability, uh, lack of focus, um, you know, very low energy, body aches, muscle tension, weight gain, you know, um, all these things, even like hair loss. Thank God I have so much hair that it's like, it's still there, thank God. Like, I have more hair than most people, which is awesome. And honestly, when I was, and this is getting to the spiritual side, this is going on and on, so I'm gonna try to wrap this up. It's 23 minutes in. But this is what I'm talking about with the spiritual side of things. Um, you know, I couldn't redo my, my visa and I was having all these technical issues and I thought it was, I was coming back because I ran out of money, I gotta get a job. But God's like, you're not well, let's go back to the US. The US does have better health insurance overall and I'm an expat so the insurance wasn't the same. Um, so it was best for me to go back to the US, but I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know I had health issues because I'd been to the doctors and they just kept giving me the runaround and told me just to lose weight when it was almost impossible for me to lose weight at that time. Um, so like you have to trust the process of what's going on and what's happening in your life, no matter what it is. 
Um, I wanted desperately to stay in France and that's all I wanted to do was like just praying like can I stay in France that's it I did not want to go back home at all I considered it a failure and that's why I deleted the video that I posted when I first got back I was like everyone I have friends like asking me like oh you're back like these people would not even like one picture of me in France not one, but as soon as I get back, oh, you're back? Okay, <laughs> okay. You know, like they didn't care that I was there. They would not give me any like props for being there, working in real estate, you know, beginning my career in real estate, making my way. But when I got back, they would remind me, oh bitch, you back, excuse my French. Oh B, you back, <laughs> welcome back. So, it just, uh, just, you know, it was shameful for me, but honestly, it, it wasn't. Like, um, I have some of the best doctors here in Denver. I'm gonna be having my surgery very soon to remove my, adre my adrenal and my neighbors. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have, be having surgery to remove my adrenal. I'm very scared about this surgery, but I also want to bring awareness to to this health issue because I don't think I even knew where my adrenal glands were. Like men and women have two adrenal glands, and you can live without one. You can even live without two. But like I always thought it was my thyroid, but an endocrinologist doesn't just do like thyroid, they're, they're in charge of the autoimmune system and adrenals is part of that. And don't quote me on this, I ain't no doctor, but um, if you're having these symptoms, it's kind of the same symptoms of, as if your thyroid wasn't working. So um, I had no idea deal to tech for the, for the adrenals. I needed a doctor to tell me what was wrong. Like I can't tell myself what's wrong like i'm not a doctor but i knew within myself like i knew something was wrong and i knew the doctor was telling me like i need to get gastric bypass and i knew there was like something else that she needed to check so if she never checked the ct scan i would have never known to this day and after nine years i noticed that there's something wrong so um you just have to trust your instinct i did another video about that about like standing up to these doctors that really just go in with their biases like they don't treat especially women of color um i think with the same respect because they, they just think that we're like exaggerating or we just are fat and we need to lose weight you know and that that may be the, be the case but there could be underlying issues as well causing the weight causing all these symptoms so I'm gonna be dipping it and doing it and going back to France when I'm well after my surgery, hopefully. But um, I'm very glad to be here in the US and have some great doctors to take care of me. Um, I wanna say this one thing, when I, was, when I was little, I kept on getting sick. Like I would have migraine headaches, I would have like um, pneumonia and I had strep throat fo fo four times and um, I just prayed to God. I was like, God, please, I don't want to be sick. I don't want to be sick ever again. And ever since that day, like I maybe had some allergy stuff, but I never had strep throat again. I never had pneumonia again. I never had the flu again. I never had anything again. So even though I have like this adrenal thing, like I, st I don't have the cushion singe disease that comes with a lot of adrenal cases. Yes, the only way that I knew it is because I was gaining weight and that's that's no, normally not me. Um, I'm very active. And the only reason why I knew something was wrong is because um, of my irritability, my depression, and my low energy. So I knew something was wrong and I was trying to treat those things individually. So God has been faithful to that prayer. <laughs> I'm so grateful because I know a lot of people I've been talking to, oh my God, excuse me. I know a lot of people I've been talking to on the internet um, that have adrenal issues and it's kind of rare to have. So um, it was hard finding other people that had it, but you know, these other women that I found have it, even a dog had it on the internet. <laughs> um, 
they they have been so sick um they uh it changes your life so much like um so to know that i didn't get that sick and it may it might have took a little bit longer to find it um but to know i wasn't that sick and god kept his promise to me i just really appreciate appreciate it and i hope that my life does change for the better like i want to be able to like travel and do things and like be in good shape and do fun things with friends and go boating and go to different countries and go on planes and just be live my best life um so i just think that don't worry about what you're going through but always just stand up to something that you feel is wrong um with your health stand up to your doctors you know and really get to the root of the problem and trust god and everything will be okay i will be you know traveling before i know it but i'm just happy that i can take this time during the pandemic to take care of my health um so honestly it's not the money issue it's it's not um anything else i came back to the u.s for my health and i'm very thankful for that um, I have been able to recover. I got a fantastic job um, working in real estate. I will tell you more about that later. Um, but so many lovely things have happened. Um, and uh, I've just gotten so many opportunities here. I want to do a video also about how to decide where you want to live and the spiritual side of that and also the esoteric side of that. Um, I will tell you how I picked Denver and why I picked Denver. Um, I did my chart and I met with um, an, an astrologer to see which location would be best based on my chart and why. And I think some things are very valid with that and that's something probably you don't hear a lot about. So I'd love to go over that process next. but. I'm going to end this here because whew, my makeup is smearing and a girl has to be looking cute on here. So I'm going to end this and um, please uh, leave your comments below about any travels that you've had or any health issues you've had while you've traveled and I'd love to um, respond. So love you guys. Uh, um, I'm going to leave a quick link to my course that I have. Um, I will leave a link to if you want to learn French and how to learn it. I give 20 tips on how to learn French fast. Um, what else do I have? I'll leave the rest of the stuff below. Um, check out my Amazon influencer page. I have some wonderful clothes that are great for travel and plus size fashion. Um, and I'll just leave everything below of where you can find me on the internet and things like that. I uh, just want to say merci pour écouter cette vidéo et uh, je t'aime tout le monde et uh, attends, uh, je suis un agent immobilier aux états unis et en France, mais je suis, uh, je suis, uh, j'ai bougé en France pour un année tout seul avec mon chien et la France me manque tellement beaucoup et c'est une expérience un voyage euh, de, de ma vie alors je t'aime et au froid à toutes bisous